Welcome back to episode 4 with the title Mechanical Animation Part 2. Today we're going to take a look at um, the path constraint uh, and look at constraint uh, controller and we're getting right into it. Um, we're going to start with um, the path constraint um, controller. Let's get into a top view of 3ds Max. I'm going to maximize my top view and I'm going to turn off the grid, uh, the background grid. So uh, first let's do it with a simple, uh, simple element. So the uh, path constraint controller allows us to make an object move along a path. Therefore, uh, I'm starting with a simple box. And this time I'm going to make the box not a cube, but a little uh, longer rectangular box and a simple line as a path. So I'm starting the line here, here, I'm making it like an S curve. Okay, so there it is. Uh, it doesn't matter if the line is not very smooth and it's not, uh, doesn't have a lot of points. That is what we could change here when we select the line and go to modify, we could change the, uh, we could change the sorry, it's on the bottom, interpolation, um, the, uh, make it adaptive. But see, the difference between the, the jagged line is the adaptive button. But it doesn't matter because the animation will be anyway smooth. So even if the path is not perfectly smooth and has these uh, straight edges here, the animation will be smooth and will be controlled in a different way. The only thing is what I don't like on my path is here, there's a little, uh, there's, uh, there's a little, a weird shape there so let me fix that so now it looks kind of okay so um, let's make our object move along a path the first thing that we take a look at is our current time our current animation length is 100 frames let's look take a look at the time configuration down here the stopwatch um, because I want to make sure that my playback button is at the right speeds. I'm going to set it, the frame rate, to PAL, which is 25 frames per second, and then keep it from 0 to 100 and hit OK. Now it's the same 0 to 100, but if I hit play, it will run in 25 frames per second. So whatever, or whatever um, frame uh, playback rate you prefer, 30 frames per second, 50 or whatever uh, fits your project, uh, is fine and you do it here under time configuration. So uh, here's my uh, box and we want to, to let the box move along the path in four seconds or 100 frames, or actually 101 frames because we have frame zero here as well. So um, this is how it works. You select your box and then go to animation constraints and you find path constraint. So the path constraint will force the box to move along the path. So here's path constraint. Now I have a rubber band on my box and I have to click on a path. Now you see it lights up when I hold my mouse on it and you click on the path. The box right away jumps to the beginning of the path, the, begin, the, the, the start point of the path. And it automatically does what it's supposed to do. It's moving along the path. You can Check it by moving the time slider. Right now we are at frame zero and when you move it, you see the box moves along the path. Let me quickly hit undo and show it one more time. So you select your box. Doesn't matter where it is right now, it will always jump to the start point of the path. So select the box, animation constraints, path constraint. You could also go, uh, I think it's also under animation position controller path constraint that's the same thing the rubber band and you click on the path so it will jump at the beginning to the start point of the path and at the end to the end point of the path how do you now control the parameters for this uh, constraint uh, it's not on the modifier in or anywhere it is you select your box and you go to motion that is the fourth tab up here and under motion, you can see that here is when it says assign controller, you can see that now the position is controlled when you open it up. 
the position is controlled by a path constraint. Uh, there is no need to look in there, so let's close the uh, assigned controller. Uh, what is important, the path uh, constraint controller has a couple of parameters. Um, and you can see here's a list of all the path that the box is moving on. Right now it's only one, but what you could do is you could actually have two path and you can move like between the two. You can also define 100% one path or 0% the other. So you can also uh, give them the path that it's moving on a certain weight. I personally prefer to use a different concept when I use more than one path. I'll show later on an example. Then I usually use a dummy linking kind of concept. You will see it later. So uh, right now it's only one, up, uh, one path. Uh, so it doesn't matter what weight, if it's only one path, you can type whatever you want. It's, uh, it's only one, so it's not, uh, not going to move on any other path. The next thing is uh, percentage along path. And this is the only thing that is now animated because you can see it has those red brackets here. That means this is the keyframe. And when I move one frame ahead, the red brackets are gone. So the only thing that is actually animated is the beginning, which is 0%, and the end, which is 100%. So we know those are the keyframes of our animation. Uh, let's move it uh, to more to the beginning. Then we also have a, a, a uh, option to follow the path. That means the, the, the box will actually rotate as it moves along a path. So this is something for if you have a, a car running on a, on a path or if you have a camera following a path, that is the follow option. Uh, which axis of my box is following? Right now, you can see the x-axis is here, the y-axis is there. When I hit follow, you can see it's the x-axis that is following the path. If you want the y-axis to follow, you can uh, define and then it's moving uh, sideways so to say so let's keep this at X then the next thing is there's also a bank option so when you use follow you can use bank and what does that mean for example if you if you take a look at the plane when a plane takes is flying a curve it's leaning towards the inside of course also a train is doing something like this or a motorcycle so bank actually means and I'll show you from the side now uh, it will lean towards the inside. The stronger the curve is, the more it leans towards the inside. This leaning factor is called bank amount and you can also adjust it. So if you don't want too much banking, you can lower the value and if you want more banking and it's leaning more towards the inside. So 0 0.1 would be more like a slight leaning towards the inside, what a, a train would maybe do. And we are at 0 0.5. This is more like a motorcycle because we're already 45 degree angle landing in. Okay, so that is the bank amount, which I'm going to turn off right now. Um, allow upside down. This is also something for cameras and so on and so on. Uh, constant velocity. That is something when you look at the, uh, at the top speed. My path has certain points. It has certain vertices. And with constant velocity... Uh, you are kind of generating uh, an, an, equal, an equal speed between those points. When you unhit constant velocity and you will run it, you'll notice that the point will in some parts be faster and in some slower. So between two points, it will speed up and then where it's points, it will slightly slow down. So for a constant speed uh, moving along the path, I would suggest to use constant velocity. Loop, of course, means when it's finished and it's uh, continuing. Um, okay, so let's see the only thing that is actually animated and that is the uh, percentage along path value. Let's open the curve editor quickly and take a look where we find the animated value. And it's when you select your box and you open the curve editor, it obviously uh, gets the animated value right away and you can see it here the path constraint percentage I'm clicking here on those two uh, things to uh, bring it right into uh, Maximize it in the window and you can see that the percentage along the path going from the beginning 0% to the end 
100%, is a linear movement. That does not mean that this, the speed is usually also linear, but it's uh, linearly moving along the path and that it's usually resulting in a linear speed. So let's try something else. What if we are not starting at 0% at the beginning, but, and I'm going to select this point here, you can see the value, it's at frame 0, that's the first one, and this is the value. Let's go at, let's type in 10. That means we are not starting at 0% of the path, but at 10%. And also at the end, we're not ending at the end at 100%, but at 90%. So, uh, that actually means when I now play my animation, you can see that it starts not at the beginning of the path, but a little bit later. And it will also uh, drive along the path and stop at, the, at 90%. Okay, so that is actually the speed is now slower because instead of going the whole path, we are just going 80% because we start later and we end earlier. Okay, that is the that is the along the path value visible in the in the curve editor, and you can actually adjust those. And if you want, and let's bring it back to the original 100%. By the way, you can also enter 110%, which actually means it will go to the end of the path, then jump to the beginning and do 10 more percent. So 110% is actually the same as 10%. And here is the beginning. I'm going to set it to zero. Okay, so much for the uh, curve editor. Let's have a uh, let's have another look about. Uh, let's have another look. And that's the, by the way relative. Uh, when you hit relative, it is not jumping to the beginning of the path, but it's doing the movement from where the original position was. But still, it's a parallel movement to this path. Uh, only. Uh, like next right next to it and when you unhit the relative then it's ch changing its absolute position to the beginning of the path okay so much for those parameters uh, uh, by the way the connection be between the box or the object moving along the path and the path is of course always linked so when you select your path and you move it to a different location then the movement will of course happen there even when you select your path and you go to modify and for example, edit the vertex, uh, one vertex of the path. Here's one. I'm going to select it and change the handle. Then you notice that the, the movement, of course, will be different. Or even if you uh, use refine and you add a vertex in there to get a totally different path, then of course, when you hit play, let me get out of the path here, when you hit play, it will follow the new path. So the path will always be, uh, the, the object will always be linked to the path. How can I get, uh, how can I get it off the path? I somehow have to cut the, the connection that the, uh, that the uh, link, that the path constraint controller did. You select your box and you go to motion. And this is where at the beginning where I, sh where I have shown you the, um, the assign controller. When you open up the assign controller and it says here uh, position and right now the position is done by a path constraint. So what you can do is you can just, uh, for example, do a right click and try reset to default controller and now the box is just where it was before. So it kind of got rid of uh, the controller and uh, that was a right click reset to default controller. What you could also do is let me quickly undo it. So, so there it is. Now we have the path constraint controller again. You could select it and hit assign controller. And instead of having the path constraint, which is also here in the list now marked with a little sign here, you could assign uh, any other controller and the usual one I think is just the uh, position uh, which one's the, the usual um, for example the position XYZ when you edit then suddenly the box is now not linked anymore because now it has a possession X Y uh, position XYZ regular coordinates instead of having the um, uh, the 
the path constraint. Okay, let's do another example. This time we're going to use the path constraint modifier together with a um, with a camera. And therefore, I'm going to create a simple geometry. I'm going to take a teapot. So I'm going to choose a teapot and put it here in the middle of my scene. When I create teapots, I usually just uh, increase the segments of the teapot a little bit because they are, so it looks a little bit more smooth. So there it is. And now from the top, uh, I'm going to draw a path for the camera. This time I'm going to take a circular path. So instead of drawing a line, I use a circle and I draw a circle around my teapot. So this circle I'm going to use for placing the camera on the circle and I would like to have a camera fly around the teapot. So um, what I need is I need a camera and the camera should be a target camera. So it doesn't matter if you use a physical or a free camera, it's the same thing. Uh, sorry, physical or a target camera. The physical can be either target or free or the target camera right here. And let's create the camera. And I'm on purpose, I'm starting the camera from the top left and I drag the target to the center of the teapot. So. The, the target, not exactly, but uh, somewhere in the middle of the teapot. The camera itself is outside there. So now when I uh, let my camera move along the path, you know it, when I apply the path constraint controller, it will automatically jump to the line. And the line, as it is a circle right here, has a couple of advantages. First of all, it ends where it starts, so it will be a circular motion that is loopable. And the beginning of this circle is here at 3 o'clock. So when you look at the, at the circle as a watch, then it's at uh, 3 o'clock is the beginning of the path or where the x-axis goes through. So I'm going to select my camera, use animation constraint, path constraint, and click on the path. So now... Uh, it didn't jump to 3 o'clock because my timeline is here at 56. But if I bring it to 0, you can see here it starts. So now the camera moves in 100 frames once around the, uh, once around the, 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 the teapot. If I look from the front, that actually means that the camera is now on the ground because my circle was on XY plane. If I want to bring the camera up, I cannot move the camera right now because it, it's only following the path. So if I want to bring my camera up, I have to select the path and bring the path up. I'm going to show in, uh, in an axonometric view. So I select the path and I bring it up and you can see that the camera will come up. Its target is not animated, so its target will stick to to, the, to its position and that is in the center of the teapot. If I now jump into uh, my camera perspective, here it is, and if I hit play, uh, you can see what it does. It flies around my teapot once. The, the, the view, the picture is not really good because the teapot is, uh, is, is, has, has a little movement and it's also leaving my picture up there. What is the reason for that? That is because I'm looking at my target and the target is here in the, cent uh, in the center of the ground plane. So if I want to look more towards the center of the teapot, I'm going to do it in front view. I have to take the target of the camera and bring it to the center of the teapot. Also, I would uh, take the circle and move it up a little bit more. So here is the picture one more time in a shaded view and here we are. Uh, if you don't like the fact that the camera is sometimes getting closer and then further away, all you need to do is um, you need to take the circle and I'm looking from the top again, take the circle and make sure the circle and the teapot align. I like to use the align function here. So I select my circle, use align and click on the teapot and make sure XYZ is clicked on and both pivot points are aligned. So now it's right here in the center. And if I now also 
place the, the camera in the center, which is already almost in the center, and I now hit play. Sorry, it got down when I when I selected it. And if I now hit play, it's a more or less smooth movement. It still moves a little bit. Uh, the reason is, I guess, because the target of the camera is not perfectly aligned. So if you bring them all together in one point or in one axis in the middle, then it's a more or less a smooth movement of the camera. Okay, so that is how you place a camera on a target. Of course, this could be any target, but in this case, with a target camera, it's, um, it's better to use a circle. I'm looking from the top again. If you want to have a let me delete the path and the camera and get some more teapots. I'm just taking this teapot and make a couple of copies. You will see right away what I'm planning. Stop. Just here. A couple of teapots. Good. If you want to have a camera and now move along a path. So here's a, a, a simple line. So I'm starting here. There. If you want to have a camera fly along a path, it's not the most smooth path that I've created. Uh, if you create a camera path, there's a few rules. First of all, you try to get as use as less points as possible. So it's better not to click many points there in order to get it smooth because you want to have uh, less points with long handles. So here's a point with a long handle. And where are, where are the, if you, let, let's imagine you are driving on a path like this. Where is the point where you could actually get headaches or motion sickness? And that is whenever the direction changes. And here is you take a right curve. And then here's a point where you suddenly take a left curve. And this is usually where you, where you get sick from. That's why uh, to avoid that, there's a simple rule. If you look at all the handles of my path, the handle should never cross the path. So uh, here's the, both parts of the handle are on one side. Now it would cross the path. You see the difference? If you take this curve, this is the point where you would actually get a headache because you get shaken left and right. So make sure you use, use as little points as possible and make sure the handle of the points is never crossing the path. It's always on one side and of course as smooth as possible. Good. So there it is. And now I would like to have a camera move along the path and therefore I am using a free camera. Don't use a target camera but because a target camera uh, you would have to animate both the target and the camera. And when you use a free camera you can avoid that. So if you now do it exactly the same way as I do uh, you avoid a couple of troubles. So I'm looking from the top in my scene and here's my path for the camera. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add my camera in the top view. So I'm clicking on free camera. I'm going to use a lens that is a little bit wider, 24 millimeter. And now I click anywhere into the scene. That creates a camera right now that is looking down. So it's a camera that as if you would shoot something on your table from the top down. And now the camera is already selected. I go to animation, constraints, path constraint. Here's my rubber band and I click on the path. And now in 100 frames, my camera moves along the path, but this is not what I wanted. It's now looking down and moving because I would like, and this is under select the camera and under motion, it automatically jumps into motion. Let me close that. Um, I want the camera to follow the path. So it's not looking down, but it's following the path. And now it's following, but still looking down. And the question is, which axis is following? And in our case, it's the Y axis that is following the path. No, sorry. It's the C axis in this case. And so there it is. There's something weird. It's rotated. Oh, sorry. You shouldn't. Oh, I did it completely wrong. 
let's stop right here. If you place your, the best way to place, the best way to place your free camera in the scene like this is not to place it in top view, but to place it in front view. So I'm switching into a front view because when I use a front view and now place the free camera, it is as if it's a, the camera is looking horizontal. And it's the same way that you usually would hold a camera in your hand. So it's looking horizontal. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the camera is already selected. I go to animation constraints. I use the path constraint and click on the path. Now the camera is moving on the path. Let me show you from the top again. We're used to the view. Now the camera is moving along the path, but it's not looking in the direction of the path. That's why we have to click follow. And when it when you click follow, it is looking sideways. Why? Because the axis that is following the the the, the path is the x-axis. In our case, we need the y-axis. So I have to play which axis of the camera is used right now and maybe if the camera is going backwards you still have the option to flip it so to look in a different direction but if you do it the same way always insert the camera from the front in a front view and then it's always the y-axis that you use or when placing it on a path okay so that's it now the camera is moving in my x and y plane if i want the camera to be slightly lifted up I have to take, of course, the, uh, the path and move it up because this camera is still is always sticking to the path. So I can either take the whole path up or down or I can also take uh, single points of my path and move it up and down. So let's quickly do this. Select the path, go to modify, go into vertex level. And if you select one point, you can move it up or another one down or up then it, the camera will go up and down see as shown here in front view good um, this is what my camera sees right now and you hit if you hit play the camera will fly through here i think you can see that every time the camera turns it is um, it is kind of shaky and this is where you usually get motion sickness and so on by the way um uh, here's a principal uh, uh, principal tip, and any if you want to do an, uh, an architectural animation, it is never a camera that moves through the whole building for ten minutes or so. Uh, and an uh, architectural animation is always made out of different clips, different camera, different camera positions, and so on. Don't try to invent something new. Look at film, how film is dealing with architecture, or how um, some advertisement is dealing with architecture, and those are the camera you, cameras you want to copy. So you want to copy real world cameras and not um, just because you have an artificial world, you suddenly uh, try to invent artificial cameras because people are not used to cameras like this. So try to keep it as simple as possible. And actually, a camera along a path, in my opinion, is never a good solution. Just for a short time but not too long people get bored uh, easily and they get motion sick all the time so uh, that is uh, look again that is how you uh, fix a camera move along a path so if you want to look it up and down you have to adjust the position of the pass with this method so let me show you a different method and that is let me kick out the camera and the target, uh, the path and the camera. Uh, here's a little uh, thing that I prefer, and that is, um, let, let me create a new path, and the new path should be flat. And let's imagine you're going through a building, try to keep it as short as possible, and you want to go up some stairs or down some stairs, meaning the camera should go up and down or changing the level and so on. That means the path would be dragged up and down, but there's a better way. There's a better way to uh, keep the horizontal movement and the vertical movement apart. And this is with using dummies. And let me uh, quickly 
create a line that goes through my uh, path again. And this time I'm going to fly over or through one of those teapots. So here's a simple path. It doesn't matter if there's some corners in it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. And now, instead of having a camera move along a path, what I'm using is I'm using a dummy mo to move along a path and the camera is linked to the dummy. So this is how it works. I am going to create a dummy. They can be found here under create and help us, the little triangle here. And here is a dummy. A dummy is a simple rectangle that is invisible and will not be rendered. So I'm just going to place it anywhere. And now I'm going to create my, uh, my free camera. So go to camera, free camera. Wait a second. Not in top view, in front view. So I'm going to go for front view and I place my camera anywhere in the scene. Let me zoom out. Let, let's go to top view, back to top view. So it can be placed anywhere. Now I'm going to align the camera and the dummy so that the camera is right in the center of the dummy. Here's the align function, so select the camera, here's the align function and I click onto the dummy. X, Y, Z position of both pivot points is the same and I hit OK. So now the camera is inside the dummy, but they are not linked yet. If I move the dummy away, they are separated again. That's why I'm going to take the camera and link it to the dummy. Select the camera, use select and link, mouse on the camera, click and hold, you get the rubber band and drop it onto the dummy. They will blink up and then they are linked. So now if I select my dummy and move it, the camera will follow. If I select my camera and move it, the dummy will not follow. I'm going to hit undo. So it's only linked in one direction. That's good because later on I can change the camera. Now we're ready to make the dummy move along the path. So I'm going to select my dummy, use animation constraints, path constraint, rubber band, click on the path and it will jump there. I'm going to make follow and I already know why is the axis I want it to follow. So here it is. Now my camera is moving along a path. It's all the same as if I would have made the camera move along the path, but now it's the dummy that's moving and the camera is only linked to it. And with this, uh, with this uh, setup, I can now for example, at this point where I'm actually flying through the teapot, I can make the camera and move it up higher. So the horizontal movement is only regulated by the path and the dummy following the path. And if I want to go up or down, I'll do it with the camera itself. So I'm looking from the side. Here is the point where the camera would go through the object. So uh, I simply select my camera, go hit auto key to create some new keys. And in this case, select the camera and move it up. So now the camera will go slowly up. And further on, it can go back down again. So the vertical movement up and down is now regulated by two uh, keyframes and we are now right there where we started uh, five oh, five uh, exercises ago with the basics of keyframe animation because the first part says camera down and this one says camera up. So I now can select this one, move it uh, a little closer because now the camera stays down and only goes up for a short period. I can also take the down key and shift move it in order to copy it and that means the camera will jump up and down. Maybe that's too short. Let's go a little bit further in time. But that's hard to see from my position. Okay, even further. And this one. Yes, so now it jumps up and down. So any vertical movement 
is only defined by the camera moving up and down. All other movements, rotation and so on, are defined by the camera linking to the target, uh, to the link to the, to the dummy, and the dummy does what it's supposed to do. It's following the path with the path constraint. Okay, was that concept clear? Try it. Uh, it's in the beginning, it might get might be a little confusing. So many links and targets, but it, it will pay off at the end because animation is, has been made much simpler. Just look at the just look at the uh, the curve editor because any vertical movement is displayed at the C position of the camera. So this is on ground level going up and down. So I can simply adjust. For example, if I want uh, the camera not uh, to be totally on the ground. I want it lifted up slightly. I just move those two up and now the camera is not totally on the ground but it's uh, slightly see, above the ground. So something I can simply set. So if I jump into the camera view uh, oops, here's the going up and down. Yeah, it's not the best animation. It's just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so um, what if my whole animation is too uh, uh, too short? Nah, that's a, that's a problem. We might adjust a few things. Let's see. I want this, exactly this animation, but not in 100 frames, but in 200. First of all, I need my timeline to be longer, to be 200 frames. So I'm going in here, set the end time to 200. And now I have 200 frames. This, whatever you see in the timeline, does not say anything about the animation. So if you set your timeline to from 0 to 50, it does not mean that any other animation that is longer will, will get lost. It's just the current time frame that you see. So I made it to from 0 to 200. And now I take a look at my dummy, select my dummy, and you can see the two keys of the dummy are 0 and 100 because it's moving from 0 to 100. So what you need to do is you need to move your key from 100 because now it's going to the end of the path and not further. You just need to take this key and move it to 200. Uh, take a look at the bottom left corner of my screen right now and it will tell you, okay, I'll show you. It will, no, it's gone. It will show you where the keys go to. So take a look here and when I move it, you can see it's moving from 100 to, well, up all the way to 200. Don't move it too far. If the timeline is much longer than 200 frames, you're dealing with a thousand frames or so, I would not recommend to move the key by hand. I would move it in the curve editor. So select the dummy, open up the curve editor. Here are the keys, the beginning of the path and the end of the path. It, it, was, it was here before, it was at 100 before. You just select the key and you type in for example, this is how it was before, after I made the animation longer. You just go in here and move the key from here, which is 100 to 200. So you can type it in and you're much more precise. Okay, and the next problem is now that the camera moves up and down too early because that was made for a 100 frame animation. So all you need to do is select the camera and the camera had three keys before the start to go up, then up and then down again. And those two, uh, those three keys have to be moved to a different point in time. Find out which point in time when the camera is right there where the teapot is. Take those three keys and move them up so that the middle key is there and we are good. Maybe move them apart a little bit further because now our camera is much slower because we got twice the time to do the same animation, Oop, but there it is. Okay, we can go down early, but the up has to be more time. Okay, there it is. So we are using a concept that we use a dummy and together with the, uh, together with, um, with the camera as a concept. The last thing that I'm gonna show you today is if you wanna place a camera somewhere that is only observing something. For example, it's observing um, the movement of the other camera. 
let's look and get into my top view. So I'm going to place a camera somewhere here in the bottom left there. And the camera should always look at the dummy. Of course, you would say then just use a target camera and link the target to the dummy. Then it will always look there. That is one solution. But I would like to show you another one. And that is called a look at constraint. So first, let me uh, create a camera. Again, free camera. Insert the camera in top view and try something else. I'm going to select it in top view and uh, bring it over here. Place the animation constraints, uh, look at constraint at the dummy. And it's, uh, I guess, Y axis, C axis, flip. See, now it's not. Okay, that was the fix. Now it's not uh, rotating up and down. So here we have a camera and it's always looking at the dummy and see what's going on. You can see the jump of the other camera. Okay, so with those, um, with those constraints, the path constraint and the look at constraint, you can work with cameras, but of course you can also have any other objects move along a path. You have cars and trains and planes and the look at controller you can also use for all kinds of other things. For example, if you have a, uh, a gun, or, uh, you know, on, like on a, on a plane and there is a front uh, a gun on it and you want the gun to look at some uh, other planes, or, you know, like spaceships, uh, you can just give the gun the look at parameter and it looks like as if the gun is always aiming at something else and so on. Okay, so those, um, those uh, look at controller can be used for that. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, hope you have fun with it and uh, I'll see you in the next one.